Dr. Brian, you're an expert on nitric oxide. First of all, let's talk about the difference between nitric and nitrous oxide because they, they sound a lot alike, but they're completely different, aren't they? They are, and more times than not, people mistake mm -hmm. nitric oxide for nitrous oxide. Uh, they're completely different molecules, although similarly, uh, nitric oxide is one nitrogen, one oxygen. Nitrous oxide is two nitrogen, one oxygen. And nitrous oxide is actually the, the anesthetic you get when you go mm -hmm. to the dentist office. And it's completely, completely different chemistry and physiology than nitric oxide. So nitrous is the laughing gas. Exactly. With it more commonly uh, referred to. Right. Uh, doctor, why does your body need nitric oxide? Well, it's probably one of the most important molecules your body makes. This was, it's relatively new in the medical literature. It was discovered mm -hmm. back in the early 1980s. Uh, it was discovered that this substance produced by your blood vessels actually is nitric oxide gas. So that was in 1987. And then in 1998, the Nobel Prize was awarded to three U.S. scientists for, collectively for their discovery of nitric oxide. So now we know it's the main molecule produced by the cells that line every centimeter and inch of blood vessels uh, that maintains normal blood pressure. Uh, it's a molecule produced by our white blood cells that helps fight off invading bacteria and viruses and even kills off rapidly dividing cancer cells. And it's a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. So it's basically involved in every biological system within the body. Can you touch on a little bit more on how it, it's made throughout the body? You talked about it's made in the vessel, so it's made in... If you have a vessel there, it's made there? Is that kind of how it works from right. Well, understanding that it's the endothelial cell, so the single layer of cells that line every blood vessel, in our body. So when they're targeted or when they're stimulated to release nitric oxide, the first pathway to be discovered was through the, this L-arginine pathway. Mm. So the endothelial cells take the semi-essential amino acid L-arginine and through a very complicated, complex, what we call what's basically a five electron oxidation reaction, produces nitric oxide. But what we're finding is over time, you become, your endothelial cells become dysfunctional. And that dysfunction uh, manifests itself differently at different uh, ages and people with different risk factors for cardiovascular disease. But really the underlying problem with people with endothelial dysfunction is they're no longer able to make nitric oxide from L-arginine. So a lot of uh, nitric oxide-based products that use L-arginine uh, are ineffective. And in mm -hmm. fact, they're ineffective because that's really the underlying problem with the patients. They can't convert the L-arginine to nitric oxide. So really, the medical, the medical community's been searching for 20, 25 years on how do you overcome that dysfunction mm -hmm. and try to recognize and discover alternative routes for nitric oxide production. So does that happen with everybody as we age, though? Does, does production of nitric oxide decrease regardless of, of the It person? does. It's part of the normal aging process. And in fact, um, you, know, you get about a 10, 10 to 12% decline in nitric oxide production per decade. So really, by the time you're about 40 years old, you have 50% of the capacity to generate nitric oxide, mm -hmm. as you did when you were 18 or 20 years old. And so we think, and we've argued, that really it's that loss of nitric oxide production that allows this fertile groundwork for at the development of atherosclerosis, a lot of the diseases that plague people later in life, uh, even Alzheimer's, uh, coronary artery disease, a number of different um, vascular problems. Are there certain things that, that we do that uh, maybe speed up the, the lack of production ability, I guess? Sure. So it's really, you know, we talk about, we think we've made some pretty profound and seminal discoveries in the field, but really when we talk about lifestyle modifications and, and diets, truly really there's certain diets that will promote nitric oxide production. There are certain diets that will quickly scavenge it and lead to a loss of nitric mm -hmm. oxide availability. Um, but yeah, so people with known cardiovascular risk factors, for instance, people with diabetes have less nitric oxide produced mm. than non-diabetics, and in fact, that's what uh, the lit literature shows is what leads to the cardiovascular complications of diabetics, is that loss of nitric oxide functionality. Uh, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, uh, the common cardiovascular risk factors okay. all point to a stepwise decline in nitric oxide production. And to the contrary, you can eat certain foods that are enriched in nitric oxide activity. You can get moderate physical exercise, which stimulates your endothelial cells to produce nitric oxide. So really diet and exercise, the right diet, mm -hmm. the right amount of exercise, will promote and actually prevent or at least delay that loss of nitric oxide activity.